Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today, we are going to address a question that was asked on social media, Facebook namely, and then the Automotive Insight Network group. Uh, somebody asked, how do I check for a bad ground, uh, engine block ground uh, specifically? What can I do to test those things? So, if that interests you, be sure to stick around. So there are several ways we can test for a bad uh, ground to the block. Uh, there are different symptoms. Some vehicles will have a slow crank, some of them will have a no crank as a result of a bad ground. Some of them will only start if you hook up the o uh, OBD connection. So that's something to keep in mind. It, every system is different. This particular vehicle uh, has a bad uh, engine ground and we're going to show you a couple of quick things you could do. And a couple of caveats that you need to keep in mind when uh, testing for these things. The first one we're going to do is the test light method. Uh, that's all we're going to use is just a little test light. So let's go ahead and uh, hook it up. We're going to show you how to hook it up. Here's the BMW. And to hook up the test light, uh, I do have an alligator clip on one end. We're going to stick that to our known good ground, which is over here. I have my maintainer hooked up to the battery, but that's just a natural um, habit for me. And we're just going to stick this on a ground here. And the idea is that upon cranking, if this light turns on, then we have a, bla a bad ground. Why? We, ha we have two grounds, right? There shouldn't be any 12 volts on the body, on the block itself. The lack of ground allows for 12 volts to... Um, come to the blocks when there's a load we're going to use our little thing here our whiteboard of knowledge our load we have b positive over here we have ground over here they need to meet up at the load let's let's assume that our engine is our load when in reality it's our starter that's our load because we need to crank we need to load up this circuit and the only way we can do that is with the starter uh, before doing anything else our ground needs to meet up at the load as well. But if there's no ground here, our B positive is gonna flow all the way to the ground side of things, where there's an open circuit right here uh, between our load and our ground. Make sense? So we will see B positive on the ground side of our load because there's nothing, there's no ground to meet up at the other side of the load. Same thing with ground, uh, with B positive issues. If we have our load over here and we have good ground, but we have no B positive, we're gonna see ground on the, where, on the wires where the B positive should be. So, let's go ahead and do our first test. And that is our cranking test. All right, we are inside the vehicle. Let's go ahead and crank this thing. And as you can see, our test light is on. So that B positive is making it past the load of the, the starter and into the ground side of the circuit. So that's one way to test. The other way to test is to do, give it a redundant ground. To do that, we use jumper cables. There's a caveat though. Uh, these jumper cables are very thin, very cheap, and it may trick you so you keep that in mind even though you can uh, go ahead and give it a redundant ground it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the test you want to rely on i would personally suggest with at the very least doing the test light method and this is why so we're about to go ahead and crank this thing and we've got our cheap uh, wiring set up our cheap jumper cable set up and uh, this is one of the reasons why i would prefer to do a test light method uh, at the very least instead of doing the redundant ground method because it's relying on the quality of your cables so let's go ahead and crank this thing and one might think well that's probably a dead battery or an accessory or this or that when in reality it's a bad ground and our cable isn't doing much of a much good right now so you may move on to a different path and that's not good either so there is a third way though 
The final method is the voltage drop method. We have one of our wires hooked up to ground. Of course, it's not battery ground because battery ground would be in the trunk. And one of them to the block ground as well. And we see a voltage drop of 8 volts. We want to see 0.100 volts or less. Now, in that discussion that we had, somebody did mention that we can see sometimes uh, cranking voltage drop may go up to 0.3, 0 0.4. Um, sure, because, well, I mean, it's a very high amperage uh, load on the uh, circuit. So what we're going to do is change out the ground strap and uh, test it real quick just to confirm and to validate that claim um, i'm sure it is right but ideally on most circuits other than cranking circuits you're going to want 0.1 volts or less on the ground side of voltage drop so let's go ahead and install this ground strap and get the testing so there's our ground strap on this particular vehicle whoa <laughs> came right off wow this is one of the worst ones I've seen. Yeah, that's definitely not going to hold any current. All right, so we have changed our ground strap. We're going to do a voltage drop test. And as you can see, unloaded with the key on engine off, we have a 0 0.009 volts of uh, voltage drop. In other words, voltage loss. We have very minimal voltage loss here. Um, that is something that may help you remember what voltage drop means. I know there's a lot of new people to the industry and you'd be surprised everyone's level is different. So we're going to do a min-max feature here. We're going to see our maximum voltage drop and it should update. Uh, yeah, we're not actually scoping this. If it was a scope, it, it would probably show up as higher. But we're going to use a multimeter on min-max mode. And what we're looking for is to see what's the maximum voltage drop across a cranking vent. Along with the test light right here, uh, just to make sure that it doesn't light up while we crank it. So let's go ahead and crank this thing. And check out our results. So what we saw in this particular vehicle, if you have a bigger engine, or a much higher load, you may see a much higher readout. But in our case here, 0 0.205 is our voltage drop during a cranking event. If it was a scope, it would probably, probably read higher as well. Uh, that is just something to keep in mind. Um, and thanks for the, the gentleman who left that comment. Um, I cannot recall at this moment while filming who that was. But you know who you are. Thank you um, for uh, sharing that. That was a a very good comment and uh, yeah I hope you all enjoyed this video I hope you see the usefulness of three different testing types and the caveats involved and uh, uh, thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed this video hit like subscribe comment down below and uh, till next time